new assurances this week from NASA that the world will not end on December 21st. This comes as one British newspaper reports that people around the globe are stockpiling supplies just in case. Joining me now is Andrew Fracknoy, an astronomy professor at Foothill College in Los Altos Hills, Los Altos Hills, Rather, California. Thank you for being here. I'm so glad to talk with you about this because there's so much attention on this Mayan calendar. I mean, supposedly signaling an end of the world on December 21st. What's the truth, Andrew, behind this calendar? Does it really predict the world's end? Well, I like to call this fiction science instead of science fiction. This is <laughs> completely baseless. There's not a shred of evidence in favor of it, but it sure is a lot of fun to be worrying about the end of the world. Hollywood knows that too. Um, as far as the Mayan calendar is concerned, Alex, this is a complete misunderstanding of how calendars work. Look, we face this kind of calendar cliff every year when on December 31 you run out of pages on your calendar. You don't think it's the end of the world, you just think it's time to go to the stationery store and buy a new calendar. <laughs> and the Mayan calendar is the same way. We are, according to some experts, coming to an end of one of their long cycle of days, but they themselves, the living descendants of the Maya, confirm that that just means the yeah. next cycle will begin. We'll give in. All right, there is this prediction about this massive, mysterious planet. I think it's called Nibiru, four times the size of Earth. It's going to come close to Earth and cause all kinds of disasters. Any truth there? Absolutely not. Nibiru, as, as it's called, is a completely made-up planet from the name of an ancient Sumerian god. Um, can you imagine, Alex, if there really were a planet that big coming close to us right now in December, is there any chance that you and all your listeners could not see it? It yeah. would be one of the brightest things in the sky. For years, astronomers would have been yelling about it. Astronomy hobbyists would have shown it in the paper. It would have been everywhere. Yeah. The notion that a planet can hide, that it wouldn't disturb the orbits of the other worlds, it's so ridiculous that scientists can't imagine how anyone takes this seriously. But you're right that people get scared because there's just so much conspiracy stuff out there. Well, and you know what? There's Hollywood, too. I mean, I got to say, when you think about that, I start thinking about, you know, Will Smith and a bunch of U.S. Air Force hot shots that are going to go up there and blow the thing up. But anyway, I also want to ask you, though, about solar flares, because there are small periods of slow, I mean, slow periods of slow solar flares, and, and sometimes they get a lot bigger. And there's one that's supposed to be looming? Well, no, actually, there is a regular cycle of solar activity where the sun gets a little bit more explosive on the surface and there was all this rumor that the that the end of the the maximum of that cycle will come in 2012 but it's not true it's actually coming in 2013 these uh, active regions on the sun are not generally predictable until they happen and even when they do happen they don't affect life on earth they occasionally damage a power grid in in Canada or they affect our satellites in orbit, but the notion that civilization would end or that MSNBC listeners themselves would be threatened, that's utterly ridiculous. All right, so my party plans on Saturday uh, the 22nd, they're good to go? Good to go, and I'm afraid we'll all have to pay taxes in 2013. Oh, that's a whole nother conversation. All right, thank you very much, <laughs> Professor Andrew Fracknoy. Thank you. My pleasure. Come